we turn to our Major Garrett here on the set, as well as Eli Stokels, who is the national politics reporter for Politico. Uh, Eli, let me start with you. With Kasich now stepping aside, what is Trump's focus going forward? Well, regardless of what Kasich did today, Trump was planning to wake up and pivot to a general election campaign to focus on Hillary Clinton, uh, and that gets a lot easier to do now uh, after last night with Reince Priebus saying that Donald Trump is, in fact, the party's presumptive nominee. And really, there was little choice left for John Kasich, who was running fourth out of three candidates. Uh, the math never worked. It was sort of a total fantasy land approach for John Kasich. And with Cruz exiting the race, uh, really, you know, tough for Kasich to get on that plane, fly to Virginia. Virginia today, hold a press conference, and make any kind of uh, believable claim that there was a path for him going forward. And it just kind of, you know, allows everyone to start to get their head around the fact that Donald Trump is going to be the nominee. There will be no contested convention, although it may still be a little bit messy in Cleveland. Uh, and now we get to see if Donald Trump can really build out this campaign, uh, you know, vet vice presidential candidates, do all the things that uh, major party nominees have to do, including help the party fundraise, which the RNC is millions of dollars in the hole because of this nomination process that's been a total mess. Donors have sat on the sidelines. So now now the question is, can Donald Trump unify the party behind him? He said last night, we have to unify. Well, it's going to be a lot tougher than adopting a, you know, a tonal shift towards humility and togetherness uh, after the kind of campaign that we've witnessed. And already you're seeing a lot of Republicans say, I'm still never Trump. I don't know if that means supporting Hillary Clinton, but I will not let this person uh, take over our party. And, you know, this is sort of a historical moment of reckoning. Uh, I think a lot of Republicans look at it as sort of what side uh, am I on? How will history judge me? And there are a lot of people who say I'm still not going to sign on and back Trump just because the party tells me uh, that he's won the nomination process. Major, I want to get you into this conversation. Mm -hmm. Bullet points here. What is priority number one for the Trump campaign? to begin a process of building bridges to the Republican National Committee and its resources to create a finance committee that raises money for the RNC for Senate candidates, both incumbent and challengers, House candidates, incumbent and challengers, and then decide what you're going to do about your own presidential campaign. Does Donald Trump loan himself a billion dollars to run Good his question. presidential campaign? Does he take public financing? If he takes public financing, does he drain all of the vitality of I'm a self-funded candidate from his own campaign. That's an enormously important existential and operational and symbolic question for Trump to answer. And then also he has to begin the process of looking at a running mate. And that process has not begun in any serious way. There is no one in charge of that portfolio putting together the exact process of vetting potential running mates. That's to come. There'll be a committee that Donald Trump talked to the New York Times about this morning, and then probably beneath that committee, which is probably going to be a ratifying committee, there'll be an actual small number of people who will do the actual hardcore vetting and checking of records and backgrounds of anyone who might be considered Trump's running mate. But he's already made clear he wants someone with experience in Washington, a politico who knows not only where the bodies are buried, but how to unearth them if necessary and how to get legislation through. So that's something to keep an eye on. But all of those things are part of a long running process that will take the next five to six to seven weeks. And fortunately for the Trump inner circle, they no longer have to run the gauntlet of the nine remaining primaries. They'll make some general trips to these, some of these states, run up the vote. But now they can focus on some of these much harder, more complex internal tasks. And time is of the essence. Major, I want to ask you about what you've heard from other Republican Party leaders, other people in Congress, in the Senate. Uh, this is a man who they've spent the last eight months, many cases, a lot of senior Republican uh, leaders uh, saying that this campaign wasn't serious, that he wasn't a serious candidate. Are we now expecting to see some of those same people sort of fall into line, fall in, because he has to unify the party. And I'm just curious how that will be seen by the American people. Some will fall in, some will remain at a distance to see what the next four to six weeks look and sound like for Donald Trump? Does he begin to address some of these issues that he himself has raised about his temperament, about his rhetoric, about his seriousness on engaging the issues? And how aggressive is Trump about trying to bring people on board by actually having conversations with them about what's important to them in their states, what's important to them on issues, what's important to them on their own political fates and futures? Those conversations have not occurred. That's one of the reasons a lot of Republicans have kept arm's length distance, if not more from Trump, because there haven't been any organized outreach. 
once that outreach begins, then a conversation can commence and people can sort of take a measure of one another. That's a process that also has to go on over the next few weeks. But I mean, in the public side, how does that go over? I mean, there's all these it, this infighting, name calling, and whatever else, and then suddenly it's kumbaya, we're all friends again? Look, uh, the public writ large watches this uh, sort of in a theatrical way. They're not going to obsess, as I do, over the hour by hour, day by day shifts, and who's aligned with who and who moves around. It's, wake me up when it's. You've all decided something, and then I'll make <laughs> a decision. The convention. Exactly. Yeah. So I think a lot of Americans, though they have been fascinated and to a large measure entertained by this process, will probably take a breath, take a break, and let this process sort of sort itself out in its own internal way and pay back attention again in July mm. once the convention commences and see if, uh, you know, what kind of presentation Donald Trump brings to a convention floor. My hunch is it'll be something unlike we've ever seen. Mm. Eli, how does Mr. Trump overcome those high unfavorables, historical unfavorables? Yes, but with women, I mean, this is a Republican Party that had, you know, went into this cycle with a problem with women voters and certainly with Hispanic voters. Uh, and a lot of the concerns that establishment Republicans have about supporting Trump and letting him take over the party is that he's only going to make things worse. And what does Donald Trump do? I mean, he may try to temper his tone, but he looks like he's going to be running against Hillary Clinton. We saw a week ago uh, his remarks after winning those five Northeastern primaries talking about Hillary Clinton. All she has is the woman card. Well, that didn't didn't really endear him uh, anymore to women. And there are a lot of Republicans that want to see, you know, can this guy moderate and can he soften his tone? But if he does that and if he tempers it too much, you know, is he still Trump? Is he still all over the news? I don't think Donald Trump wants to take the next five, six weeks off uh, and see the, uh, you know, the cable TV airwaves uh, to Hillary Clinton or anything else. I mean, he has done this by staying in the news, by moving the ball, by remaining interesting. And a lot of that is bombast and spectacle. And so that's the, another tension for Donald Trump is how do you continue uh, to hold everybody's attention while also maybe uh, taking a little bit of a, more of a presidential posture. And the problem with that, of course, is Donald Trump's Twitter account lives forever <laughs> and all of his cable appearances yes. and television appearances live forever. He cannot unwind this watch. Right. There is no amount of rhetorical toothpaste he can shove back in the tube. It's all out there. So if there is a dramatic step away to Eli's point, it will be captured and pushed right back into the Trump forces and their faces by the Clinton campaign. And everyone who considers themselves a surrogate of Trump is going to have to try to figure out what to do with a Trump that was and if there is a reinvented Trump that is. And that disconnect, that internal tension, if the Trump campaign tries to create it, will shadow him throughout the general election. All right. Major Garrett here with us in New York and Eli Stokels. Thank you both very much. We appreciate it.